a historic move to ban cash bail in Illinois can now proceed as planned. That's what the state Supreme Court decided earlier this week. Justices overturned a lower court's decision to block the ban, which eliminates the requirement for defendants to post a cash bail so they can be released before trial, instead of waiting it out behind bars. Illinois judges will still have the power to hold defendants before trial, but a prosecutor has to argue they're a flight risk or a threat to public safety. Judges maintain extremely broad discretion, right? There has always been an enormous slate of options for judges pre-trial um, to put into place for individuals to return to court and to protect the public. Abolishing cash bail was part of the Safety Act, an expansive criminal justice overhaul passed in 2021. An Illinois judge struck down the law, ruling the bail provision could only be enacted with an amendment to the state's constitution, not with a new law. But Chief Justice Mary Jane Thies wrote in the Supreme Court's decision, our Constitution creates a balance between the individual rights of defendants and the individual rights of crime victims. With this ruling, the cash bail system will officially come to an end on September 18th. But the controversy surrounding it isn't going away anytime soon. We want to be safe in our communities and our families want to feel safe. This is bad for the police. They work hard to take dangerous criminals off the street and this creates a revolving door to put them right back on the streets. Republican leaders aren't shying away from their criticism here. They say bail is key in ensuring defendants who are released from jail actually show up for court proceedings. And they worry the ruling enables violent criminals to roam free and commit other crimes while waiting on their trial date. Some point to the recent rise in homicides and crime nationwide as a byproduct of changing bail policies. But supporters of the ban say cash bail is a penalty on the poor. Defendants with money can pay for their ticket out of jail, while those who are financially strapped have to wait behind bars. These are folks who just need extra support to have access to the same system of justice that the wealthy always have. And people of color are often the most affected. Today's ruling ensuring that we will no longer criminalize poverty, disenfranchise communities simply because of their lack of cash, and focus on keeping those who cause harm to our communities accountable is a historic, historic day. Now, Lauren, as you well know, you know, the core function of bail and cash bail is to make sure that the person that is accused of whatever crime shows back up to court for their court date. And, you know, Aaron George, who you heard from in the piece, said that there are other ways to make sure that happens besides displacing their life in many ways by keeping them in jail for long periods of time. Things like providing transportation to those suspects on the day of their court date or text message reminders. A, 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 a study out of Santa Clara, California, found a 20% reduction in arrest warrants issued to people for missing court dates just with text messages reminders to Come to court. They sent a message on the seventh day, the fifth day, and the one day before that court date. And again, saw a 20 percent reduction in those arrest warrants, Lauren. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible because, as you mentioned, it's been years of seeing, you know, this movement kind of unfold. And now that there's been a little bit an, enough time to start getting some, uh, you know, reports back on how is it working. And of course, more time is needed. But uh, Jamal Anders with the latest out of Illinois. Thank you very much.